how to have better conversations with your kids, your partner, and colleagues, level up and deepen your relationships. Today, we're diving into a surefire way to absolutely transform your conversations, whether you're talking to your colleagues, your team, your partner, or your kids. <sighs> That's like pulling teeth, but anyways, we'll get into that. Not only that, but it will deepen your relationships and boost your understanding with those closest to you. No more, why didn't they tell me that? Or I didn't see that coming. And it involves doing and saying way less, which is definitely more in this case. Specifically, our 1% improvement revolves around getting 1% better in one of the most crucial aspects of effective communication, the art of asking questions, but not just any questions, open-ended questions. I'm Daryl Black, and I'm creating the 1% movement where I help others get just 1% better each day in all aspects of one's life, family, community, work. And let's face it, that's all anyone can ask of each other, ourselves, right? Now, I've experienced this, and from a parenting perspective, I'm sure you have too. I pick my kid up. I'm pretty pretty stoked to have a, like a deep conversation with him. He's, uh, he's 16 at the moment, and I'm like, okay. Let's really dive into the meat of the day. He's been at school. He's been learning. His mind has been expanding. He's creating social networks and, and all of the things, right? Hey, buddy. He hops in. Good to see ya. How was your day today? How was school? Fine. Okay. Um, hey, uh, last night, did you enjoy the movie we watched? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Good, deep conversation. Good talk. Good talk. And then crickets, right? Yeah, that doesn't give me anything. So I thought about this and I decided to leverage a concept I teach in my leadership programs, the open-ended question. And since I've used these types of questions extensively and almost exclusively, it's really helped understand the thought process of my dude. It helps me gather better data and really helps him feel heard. And since then, we've been having such great conversations. Let's translate that to work. Hey, Sally, was the feedback from the client positive? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Appreciate the one-on-one -on -one time. And uh, let's move on. No information at all. I'm sure you've experienced this yourself. So first things first, what are open-ended questions and why are they so powerful? Let's break it down. Open-ended questions are questions or queries that require more than just a simple yes or no answer. They invite the other person to share thoughts, feelings, experiences, all of those kinds of things. And it's really an opening of a door into a deeper, more meaningful conversation. Now, contrast that with closed-ended questions, on the other hand. And those typically elicit short, direct responses, much like my dude, hey, how was school? They can be useful in certain situations, don't get me wrong, but they often limit the depth of that conversation and really add uh, nothing of value per se. Versus open-ended questions, however, they open those floodgates of communication. They allow for that richer, more meaningful conversation and exchange. Like I said, to be crystal clear, there is a time and a place for both. If it's a task, for instance, then close-ended is fine. Did you complete X task. It can be yes or no versus, hey, what are your thoughts on your completion of taking the garbage out? Well, okay, that actually could lead to a different conversation. But that's probably not the one that you want to have. You actually literally just want to know, did you take the garbage out or trash to my American counterparts? You get the idea. But why do open-ended questions work so well? It all boils down to engagement and understanding. Something that's extremely common in today's families, workplaces, and communities is that folks don't feel heard. They feel like they don't have a voice. And we don't feel like we really are interacting on, a, on an anything but superficial level. When you ask someone an open-ended question, you're showing genuine interest, provided that you actually do, and we'll get into that. Interest in their perspective. And that in turn not only encourages them to open up, but also fosters that sense of trust and rapport, which is so, so important when you're building teams or creating families or just trying to create a unit that's cohesive and supportive and mutually respective. In addition, open-ended questions yield far greater understanding and data from which to make decisions. So from a family, community, workplace perspective, that is tremendously invaluable. So instead of an inch deep and a mile wide, your conversations go an inch wide and a mile deep. Much, much better way to go. Some feedback from folks I've coached from a leadership perspective. When my manager started asking me open-ended questions during their one-on-one -on -one meetings, I felt like my opinions 
truly mattered. It motivated me to contribute more and be more engaged in our projects and be more engaged in the conversations I'm having with my manager because they were potentially at a deeper level. Love that. In a couple of minutes, I'll give you two specific questions to use with your team in addition to a veritable plethora of others, but stay tuned for that. Now, what about in the personal context? Well, I know for me, as I said, I've noticed a significant difference in my conversations with, with my dude since I started using open-ended questions a few years ago. Instead of getting one-word answers, we now have more meaningful conversations where I think he really feels valued and heard. And honestly, it's so interesting because he actually reverses that and uses open-ended questions on me. And I'm like, wait a second, hold on, Padawan, I'm the Jedi here, not you. There's a pecking order here. I'm just kidding. I actually find it really, really interesting because then I can open up around what I'm thinking, my thought process and, and my values and, and all of those other things. And so rather than just having a cursory, superficial conversation, yeah, we can get into it a bit more. Now, let's be clear. It's not like we're having deep, uh, you know, Dr. Phil kind of conversations between ourselves. Like, let's not, you know, go that far. But absolutely, the conversations are much better. And I really am getting to know him and really loving the opportunity to get to know him. Yeah, I get it. That, that's all fine and dandy. But from a practical perspective, this is all about practically implementing 1% improvements. Here are three general tips to get you started. First one is start with what and how. These words naturally lead to open-ended questions. Two of my favorite actually are, what are your thoughts on? Or can you tell me more? Question mark. So again, what are your thoughts on? Or can you tell me more? Actually, what's really interesting is people, human beings naturally dislike silence. And so you say, what are your thoughts on? And then crickets, leave that silence there. Because like I said, you're actually leveraging the discomfort in a way of people not wanting to sit in silence. So that's number one, start with what and how. Genuine interest, you have to show genuine interest. People can sense authenticity, so ask questions that you're genuinely interested in, which leads me to the third part. Listen actively. Give the other person your full attention and respond thoughtfully to their answers. Offer encouragement. I have a lot of episodes on active listening. I'll be continuing to move forward with those. So the three again, start with what and how, specifically my favorites. What are your thoughts on? Can you tell me more? The second is show genuine interest. People, they, they can sense that, whether you give a shit or not. And the third one is listen actively. Be present. Give the other person that full attention. So those are the three general tips. And we'll get into some more specifics now. Let's start with kids. So fellow parents, these questions I'm about to list off, they're examples. And they're actually meant to encourage your child, your, your, your kid, your offspring, whatever you want to call them, to express their thoughts, feelings, and opinions more openly. And that in turn will foster those deeper connections and understanding. And I know that, I, like I said, I gain invaluable insight into what he is thinking, how he's thinking, all of those other things. And I find it so interesting because then I can figure out what makes, uh, makes him tick and that in turn can allow me to motivate him or package uh, certain things in a particular way and just really know uh, more about him in general. I just absolutely love that. I use it all the time. And I'm like I said, I'm seeing the results. And he's asking me open-ended questions, which is like super crazy. So what are some specific examples? What was the best part of your day today? How did you feel when a specific event happened? What do you think would make the situation better? Can you tell me more about what you did during blah, blah, blah? How do you think some sort of character in a story or a TV show felt when X occurred? What's something new you've learned recently? What's your favorite thing to do when you're having free time? You could go anywhere in the world. Where would you go and why? What's something you're looking forward to? And hey, how do you think we could solve a problem together? Now, just so we're clear, this doesn't automatically mean you're not getting one word answers, but it certainly paves the way towards a deeper conversation. And that's really what this is all about. So that's just a, a number of examples for parents. And what about your partner? So let's apply open ended questions here. So here are some examples. What are your thoughts on blah, blah, blah. I talked about that earlier. How do you envision our future together? How can we improve our communication as a couple besides watch this video? 
How do you feel our relationship has evolved over time? What do you appreciate most about our relationship? Kind of get the idea there. Again, yeah, you can get some one one word answers for sure, but you're you're certainly opening that door and and hopefully your partner walks through that. And finally, some examples for work. From a workplace perspective, these really foster the communication and employee engagement and it really provides opportunities for growth and development within the workplace because that is feedback that comes back in terms of uh, employee survey results, all those other things. My manager doesn't care. No one listens to me, so on and so forth. So here are some examples that you could use from a work perspective. What do you find most challenging about your current tasks or projects? How do you see your role evolving within the team or company in the next year? What support or resources do you feel would help you perform your job more effectively? Can you walk me through your thought process behind blah, blah, blah? Like I said, these questions aim to foster that open communication and really boost that engagement. As a facilitator, I've moved away from, for example, from, hey, does anyone have any questions? Crickets, often crickets, 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 to what questions does anyone have? Very, very subtle shift, but pretty profound in its impact. I'll also give you some other kind of pro tips from facilitation perspective on how to create engagement a little bit later in uh, future episodes. But for right now, it's basically instead of saying, does anyone have any questions? You ask, what questions do they have? And you can apply that same uh, technique. I do it when I'm facilitating programs and whatnot uh, on meetings, and I would encourage you to do the same. In addition, what other ones do I use? Because this is all about my own lived experience and imparting some of my learnings to you. But I can assure you, I don't use all of the ones I gave earlier, like for sure not. I gave those as examples. Because I'm simple and I believe in the 1% movement, I focus on things I can remember, things that move the needle the most in my own conversations and interactions. So two that are really popular for me that I use, whether it be on a deployment for a wildfire or flood or something like that, or managing a project, whether it be in person or remotely, the two questions are this, what are you working on versus are you working on X? So what are you working on? And the second is, how can I help? What are you working on? How can I help? So the how can I help is versus do you need any help? There's just a natural tendency for people to say, no, I, I'm good. I'm good. It, it, it's, again, really, really subtle and quick. But shifting your, your words can have a huge impact. Now, if you really want to supercharge everything, you combine that. What are you working on? How can I help? And what are your thoughts on? And can you tell me more? Like, man, those four alone, those are kind of my pillars that I go to from an open-ended question perspective. Because like I said, I, I, uh, I'm not terribly brilliant. And I really stick to principles and the things that will move the needle. So I, I really rely on those four. Remember, mastering the art of communication takes practice and incorporating open-ended questions into your conversations can really take them to a new level. So give it a try. And honestly, watch as your connections over time deepen and your relationships flourish, whether they be personal or professional. Again, it's not going to happen overnight. And it's not about changing how you interact with everyone all the time. It's about trying something different, something tangible, simple, and something you can do consistently. It's about getting better just 1% each day. And in this case, it's about deepening your relationships through open-ended questions, just that 1% each day. I appreciate your time. Let me know in the comments which technique or which open-ended question you prefer and any of your own experiences with it versus close-ended. I'm really curious and let's learn together. Let's make this 1% movement big. Thanks for your time.